Good morning, West Norwich! And welcome to our Morning Throners podcast. I am Nelson. I'm Jeff. I'm Glow. And I'm Kyle. <laughs> We're the fucking Morning Throners. All right, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of your Morning Throners podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a quick reminder to follow us on any streaming device you want. Nelson, break the list off. We got now we're on YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, all of it. All right, Maybe and all that other others. bullshit. And we're here Let's to talk go. about probably the most exciting chapters in the book, and that's Catelyn. Here's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the second one. Jeff's favorite. Yeah, oh, is this Cat Catelyn too? Catelyn. I already, yeah, I already listened on, to you bitch about Cat for, for 40 minutes straight once. No, she's, so, <laughs> yeah. she's so good. All right, let's, let's go. get going. All right, so starts off. Um, again, I have my timeline. I think this is like five days after the last two chapters. Not that it, re- it really matters at all, but a few a little <coughs> bit of time has passed. And how does it start off? Uh, she's in bed with Ned, oh, right? Uh, she's got yeah. nutted in. Yeah, yes, yeah, she did. Oh yeah, there's creamy pants in my. Eyes. <laughs> Just Quick. hoping it quickens. Yeah, which yeah. is crazy. Let's just stop there for a second before we even get into anything. Kyle thought. She's what, 33 years old? Is she? Well, how old's Ned? Didn't we say he was like 31? Yeah, I think they're like. I have no idea how old she is. Old as dirt, right? She can't be much older than Ned. That's not bad. She might be younger. Yeah, right. Exactly. Because she was, uh, what, 12 when she was betrothed. I think it says it later in this chapter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, So she can't be that old for her to be worrying about her vagina quickening and being able to. Have another maybe because she's had too many children. Maybe you're like, well, her. she's also. Well, also she's I know when you Ned have too many children, your she's uterus starts Ned to fall while. out. So well, also like nowadays, if you have children like past like forty, there's like health effects and you have to be kind of careful. I'm sure they didn't know anything about that, so it was probably just like super dangerous to have kids. Dude, thirty six was like the limit for a while. You know how now, I mean, old, with technology like, and I don't know, so when we can... what year was this from then? Like I mean, they probably didn't this live that old. Two hundred ninety eight AC. So they're probably like. AC. What the after AC? conquest. <laughs> okay. That's how they did things before <laughs> conquest and after conquest. In this okay. World. Anyway, they probably didn't live that old. So thirty is probably like over middle aged, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, but her her vagina should still work. Is all I'm saying. Like she should, unless her uterus is falling out. Because I know, like, well, yeah, her, she says it still works, but she says she only has all a right, few quit more. Quit talking years. about the uterus falling out. She just says she only has a few more years. Yeah, and Ned's leaving for a bunch of time. Well, she didn't know that. I don't know when they're going to. She didn't know that. She's just trying to. Uh, she's just true. trying to pump that's out true. kids. I mean, she kind of knew that. I mean, she had she Rick in all... three years ago. So Rob's fifteen. So just figure it out that way. Rob's fifteen. How young can you have a kid? Like young teens, if you're like 15, really... 16. 15 for sure. So she's at, at least, least thirty. Yeah. I don't think she's much older than thirty. I'm just saying she shouldn't have to worry about having another kid right now. But let's get let's get going. So she just yeah. got boned. Um, <laughs> she's talking about the. This is where she starts talking about the hot springs. We mentioned it last she got time. Smashed, dude, Winterfell actually. is fucking advanced, dude. They got fucking hot water heaters yeah, running through the walls. It doesn't make sense. That's what I was thinking. Is like, how it's does the water sick. come up through the walls? Right. Those springs like, have no to be pumps. pushing up. There's like pressure. Yeah, there's yeah but some pressure. that's a fuck ton of pressure to go through they the got, whole like, castle. Old faithful type shit happening. No, not through their the whole castle. castle. It's just through the wall, right? Her walls. She said at least her wall. So, like, I assume the inner castle. She said it's what, like, makes it so they don't die in the wintertime. So right. it can't just be, like, in one spot. I feel like it's most of the castle. And we also hear that they have a greenhouse. They call them the glass gardens. Um, and they said that the because there's a spring, that keeps that the ground in there moist, and then there's, like, the greenhouse does its greenhouse thing so that even the uh, so they can, like, grow food there. It's also crazy that they figured out that having a greenhouse like a glass building with the sun in the winter would still well, work. Later, well, later, Mr. Lewin to... says they have an observatory, so, like, they're not, like... Yeah, they're not stupid. Yeah, but I guess. I mean, who's the first person to buy to uh, build a whole... Probably Brand the Builder, I guess. Maybe he was just really fucking smart. Um, but, yeah, I, yes. that's here. So, Neither here nor there. They start talking about uh, the thing that Robert... Uh, Hand of the King. Hand of the King thing, yeah. Right. Uh, Ned is all about refusing, and how's Cat feel about it? She wants him to go. She's, Hell no. Yeah, she's just saying, like, you can't... He just rode all the way here. You can't fucking disrespect him like that by throwing the offer back in his face. You gotta go. 
Oh, we're dead. There's not even an option, yeah. But she's like, but he's like, but we're friends. Like me and this guy are dudes. Like he's not gonna hurt us because no, like, you're not. You him. don't know the king. You know, you knew Brandon or uh, Robert. Robert, yeah, fuck Brandon. Yeah, and she says like Brand. that he's different now that because he's a king and kings act different than than men. Uh, than yeah, normal yeah. Men. and she's kind of excited about Sansa being queen. Yeah, she's oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, she does like that. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, what's so wrong with wanting to say, wanting Sansa to be queen? Um, and then we find out a little bit that Ned married Cat because his older brother died. Like she was, uh, like supposed to marry his older brother. We probably we might have talked about this before, but I think this is where we first hear it. Um, I think it was last podcast. Custom to custom decreed that when a marriage pact couldn't be fulfilled because of death, like a younger sibling would take the requirement. Um, because we hear this when Ned's saying like, I didn't ask for any of this. Like this should all have been Brandon. Like, he should be a king's hand and the one going south, not me. Yeah, Ned literally just wants to be the ward. What is it? The ward of the north and warden of the north. I don't even think he wants that. Like he, like just trying to be a Stark chilling at his castle. Yeah, even that has like a ton of responsibility. Being yeah, but he at least like expected that kind of probably as a the second Stark. You know what I mean? I guess not. But like, do you like this is this is uh like Ned would be boring. He's if like he just so. Stayed up there. He, I just I mean, mean like if I like if you had to be friends with one of these people, Ned is not somebody like he's a good character, but he's not some because like, he's too good a guy. He's just like always worried about his duty oh, yeah, ever. He's... Like I wouldn't want to like at the feast, Robert was getting nah, drunk and Ned was just on. sitting he's, there pissed he's off. He's had fun. It sounds like they nah, had, they've had fun. Come on, know, Robert's friends with him. You you think Robert? I don't know, man. If you have a, a one friend who is a uh, you know a straight well, arrow, that's the thing is he used to have fun when he didn't have any responsibilities. When he was like when he had an older brother who he thought was gonna do a bunch of this stuff, I think. And he's like, right, oh, I so can just he, like have so fun the rest of my the... life. And all of a sudden, brother's dead. Now I'm in charge and I can't have fun anymore. So he grew the fuck up. Robert yeah, never that did. That's why I wouldn't like Ned. Okay. You don't want to grow up. All right, Peter Pan. Stay, stay young, kids. <laughs> don't go to school. All right, so this is what Maester Lewin comes in, uh, and he says he has urgent news. Big knock at the door. Did you skip over anything? Nothing important. Uh, they do mention something. What's up? What I missed? Uh, I well, they anything. Catelyn talks about like how Brandon Shadow is still kind of in, in between them oh, in the yeah. bed. And then she also says uh, the woman who had borne him is bastard son. Yeah, but they don't talk any more about that. Right no, here, I think it's they? just important. they get into it's it. It's a little end, foreshadowing. Right? They talk about it towards the end a little bit. Um, yep. Yeah. So then Maester Lewin comes in and he says he has urgent news and he has something. What's he got? Kyle. He's got an eyepiece, a glass, or not an eyepiece, like for a telescope well, piece. He says he found a box with a yeah. glass piece in it. Yeah. But then he was uh, poking around the box a little more. It sounds like. Well, he he says found he took a false the whole thing bottom. Apart. Okay. But also, it said, he said he thought to talk, take the whole thing apart because the glass was a symbol to look closer, which I don't yeah. know if I buy. Because he said yeah, he I found it in his observatory. Out. Yeah, how would I? Sense. I mean, I would. But also, it is kind of weird. It got dropped off by nobody. Or like, no, like yeah. he didn't see anybody. Yeah, it just he showed just up in it. his place. Yeah, so he he says it's for Cat. Yeah, he found a letter inside that was uh, marked for Cat in her eyes alone. Yeah, so he gives it to her. Um, and the wax says it, it's like blue wax, so he knows it's from his sister, because uh, it's John Aaron. It's like from the house that John Aaron's from, the Aaron's house, okay. which is uh, where we heard she fled to. Um, and so she has a bad feeling about it. She opens it and reads it, and it's in a secret language that her and her sister made up when they were kids. That's so she crazy. Said that like nobody would be able to read it anyway. It's probably just like pig Latin, right? Probably how complicated could it be if they made up? A yeah, I feel like this kids? still happens. Yeah, it can't be crazy. I mean, yeah. crazy enough that they're pretty confident that nobody else can read it. I don't know. Maybe you don't think if like, you took the first letter and moved it to the back. And... This is confusing to me because like in like a paragraph, she says, "Do you know she, this would mean death if it fell into the wrong hands?" If she really thought nobody could figure this language out, it wouldn't mean death. Like it would be useless to anybody. Yeah, that's true. But, That's why, like, I didn't understand that. But mess. Uh, okay. I think yeah, she I'm just means you. if the the message itself fell into somebody else's hands, it yeah. would mean death. Like if somebody found out that she was telling her what she was telling her. Yeah, like maybe it was like every fifth word, like one of those types of types of languages. Even that doesn't really make sense. The like every fifth word is what are... matters. <laughs> yeah. It's a three page uh, note. Just well, for you could just you would need sentence. like two sentences to convey what she says, right? Because. Uh, Basically, what it says is the Lannisters killed John. Yeah. 
Yeah. What also is suspicious is she reads this, stands up, walks across the room, and builds a fire around this letter, and then lights it. Naked. And she didn't let anybody read it. Like, Maester Lewin said he hadn't read it, and Ned hadn't mm. read it. Like, why not be like, look what it says. Like, who just burns it? Like, she and... probably knew they couldn't read it. It didn't mean anything. That's what yeah, I'm saying. I like, true. I think it's this language, language is a lot different. It's like, uh, fuck. There's a movie where people are like, oh, we have our own language. Like, it's like them and like their imaginary friend. And like, well, how just, would like, you write make, that? First off, I think like, some tribes like have no, that language. Yeah, I language know. Like that. It was like I can't remember what the movie is, but it was like me and my imaginary like friend Park. had a secret language, and it was like something crazy. It was like, wow, I, I gotta look up the movie. Go ahead, keep talking. There was this girl, girlfriend, and boyfriend in like ninth grade, and I remember they used to pass notes with like a language and i like i would try to figure it out like yeah let me try and like read that dude it was nonsense <laughs> you were intercepting foreign love notes <laughs> well like yeah it was like yeah let me try like Got they didn't care they're laughing about it they're like no <laughs> he's not gonna figure it out and dude like i i don't know how they did it i was like what the f- dude, you guys are weird <laughs> so one thing i'm gonna point out real quick um while just looking at that movie the next thing and somebody i think said it when she gets up to throw this paper away she's naked and doesn't seem important she puts on a thing and ned's like you're naked in front of mr lewin and she's like there's no sense for false modesty he birthed all my children but then we later hear in this chapter that her, rob was born at river run so lewin yeah. was at river run back then so was there was he the maester from winterfell come down to birth her child or like did he come with her from river run and the river got a, run got a new maester and if so what happened to the old winterfell maester um just want to point it out each so Kyle, I don't know if you if you've known, but like each, uh, I, I'm sure it says it probably explicitly in a chapter or two. Basically, each castle has a maester. That is just like the the educated one. Okay. Go to. He's like the the doctor. The one thing they do say is that each thing. in this one that each maester when he walks in, I think they say that he's wearing a chain of many different medals. Yeah. Each medal, and again, I'm sure they'll say it in a different one, but each medal is like signifies a different study. So, like, okay. if you took math and then astronomy and, like, so different maesters are specialized in different things and it's symbolized by what How many different changed. metals do they have? Jeez. I don't know. Braun, tin, iron. They, they use weird ones. Draconian. Uh, they, they explicitly or, call out... combinations, so... It's weird, though. They, they explicitly call out, like, certain metals later and there are, like, theories that uh, really rely on, like, oh, this maester has, like, a bronze ring, so he would know that this is... Like, so he's an expert in poison, so he would know that this is a poison, or he has an iron ring, so he's an expert in, like, Warcraft, so he would be good at, like, counseling, okay. or he would know, like, all the history of all the battles and stuff like that. Um, so, just kind of weird that he came from River Run. Uh, we don't know what happened to the one that was at Winterfell, or if he was the one from Winterfell come down. Just thought I'd point it out. Um, Maybe he was theirs. What do you mean? River runs maester? And he went with cat. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. To... That's what I'm thinking. Because you normally you need like a maester on the road to like take care of it. Like you don't need yeah. it, but you would want one on the road to take care of a baby, to help take care of a baby. Um, so she tells him what's in the uh, what's in the letter that it just says that John Aaron was killed by the Lannisters. We said earlier, and especially the queen. It calls out the queen. Um, yeah, the queen did it right. That's what she. That's what the letter says, and then Ned dis, that Ned dismisses it and says that like, oh, Lysa's just she's grieving. She doesn't know what she's saying, and that's when Cat says it was too dangerous. Like she wouldn't have sent it because so, it's too dangerous. Just to confirm, the queen is Cersei, right? Cersei, yeah, yeah, yes. All right, can we take a quick it, time out? Yeah, I'm gonna put it right next to my mouthpiece so you guys can hear the scene. Let me so know. So this, this, this is this is this is uh from Wedding Crashers. Oh, they they made up a fake language of Wedding Crashers. Okay. Of course, they all. We spoke different languages, and one of them, his name was Caleb. He spoke a magical language that only I could understand. Potato? 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 Get them all matched up. <laughs> That's the crazy ginger chick. Yeah, man. Yeah. What a smoke, too. Whew. Yeah, she's hot. Uh, didn't we say she could be uh, the one that lord? She, yeah, 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 yeah. She could be... Uh, What's it What's called? Her name? In, uh, From the second Duncan story. Egg. Yeah, Duncan Egg. Yep, oh, yeah, the Red yeah. Widow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Red Widow. Potato? Potato? <laughs> I don't see the Red Widow doing that, though. 
Oh man. Um, all right, here we go. Where were we all right, at? So, well, you took all that time to find that shit. <laughs> well, I had to think about what the movie was. That's pretty was. good investigation. I did think that wasn't very long. I don't think. I think that wasn't bad. Yeah, uh, we, we covered one tr- one paragraph in my notes. I didn't even know what the movie was, so I had to think about the movie, then find the scene, and then you know the whole deal. <laughs> so we basically just covered the the whole Lewin thing, Lewin. Um, well, that you know, he was in River Run when Rob was Yeah, born. that he was in River Run. You heard that. Yeah. Nothing important. So well, what happened? What happened to the Winterfell? That's Mace what we're saying. Like, do, was hmm. he the maester in Winterfell, and that he was like sent down to just watch Cat on the road with the baby, knowing gotcha. that he would come back with her, and then he was there was just nobody in Winterfell for a little while, or yeah. Do a little bit of history check and bring us back next pod. Well, gotcha. I think that I think there's some theories out there, so we'll just keep an eye out in later books. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And maybe I'll mention oh, something in the post-podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the wa- go ahead, go the on. one thing I've noted here, um, when they actually got the message, yeah. Ned was, like, really freaked out. Yeah? Like, before, like, he, like, was like, what, what does it read? What does it read? Like, he was like, I don't know what he thought the message well, had. but he did say, like, the person comes in and says, like, oh, Mace Lewin's here. He wants to talk with you. And Ned's like, have you told him that we said explicitly not to be disturbed? And he's yeah. like, oh yeah, he says it's urgent. Which kind of, like, I guess, would make you a little nervous. I don't doesn't seem like he knows anything about this letter before he gets there. But he's kind of already yeah. on edge because of the whole, the whole thing. Yeah, that's true. So after they talk about what it was, Catelyn's like, okay, that's it. You have to go south. And it says like Ned had come to like the opposite conclusion. It's, not, it's something like that, yeah. like the line in the book. Because she's like, you must go south to find the truth. And Ned's like, what if? There's why? like people killing each other. Like, why would I go? She saw it once that Ned had reached a very different conclusion. She's so <laughs> yeah. stupid. Yeah. Uh, so Lewin you have goes, to go there and put yourself in danger. Yeah. They just killed the last hand, so maybe they won't kill you. Like, what yeah, the fuck Lu- are you? So Lewin, like, all of a sudden, just like immediately backs up Cat. Right? She's like, "Oh no, you have to go." And like, you could find as the hand of the king, you have the power to find the truth of what happened and bring those like to justice or whatever. Like, he immediately has a stance. Uh, like 100 percent behind Cat. Yeah. So then Cat's like, yeah. And if Robert is really like a brother, then you can't leave him alone by the Lannisters. And I got a quote. Um, that like how Ned responds. The others take both of you. Ned muttered darkly. He turned away from them and went to the window. She did not speak, nor did the Maester. They waited, quiet, while Eddard Stark sat, said a silent farewell to the home he loved. When he turned away from the window, at last, his voice was tired and full of melancholy, and moisture uh, glittered faintly in the corner of his eyes. My father went south once to answer the summons of a king, never came home again. A different time, Maester Lewin said. A different king. That was the last quote of the chapter, right? No. 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 It was just like in the middle. Yeah, so we hear that Ned's dad got uh, called south to answer the summons of a king, and he went. And this kind of ties back into what we heard in the two chapters ago in the first Ned chapter, where he. When they was... were down in the crypts. That, well, we heard that his brother was killed by strangling by the Mad King. And that his dad was made to watch. So, makes sense that they're all together for it. Yeah. Um, so, kind of like, like kind of similar thing, right? Ned is the Lord of Winterfell getting called south, and he's bringing his kids with him. Like, you would think that if he learned anything from his, his dad, like, if his dad got called south and looks like he brought Ned's older brother with him, if you think he would learn anything, he would leave the kids at home. Right. If he was concerned about this. Um... And Lewin says it's a different king, meaning like, oh, it's your friend now. It's not, uh, it's not Ares. Does he start listing what kids he's taking with him? Yeah, she. They like start deciding. Yeah, like, they start talking about that. Who's going where? So obviously Sansa needs to go because she's marrying Joffrey. Yeah, and Rob has to stay because he's we like used... the Lord of Winterfell. Or he's gonna be right. the Lord of Winterfell. Yeah, he's and he's gonna learn how to rule. Yeah. We're yeah, gonna so... take Arya because she needs a little bit of southern touch to her. She's got yeah. too much of the north in her. And, she, and and they say, uh, while Rob's staying, Cat and Lu- Ned's like, you guys got to make sure he's ready because I'm not going to be around. So like, uh, teach him how to be a man. Teach him how and to be a man and a leader. Yeah. Be a man. Be and a Rick man. And, Rick and staying with her and Rob. Yeah, because he's too young. Yeah. He's too he's too little. And then there's the big one. Bran. She Bran. gets like real pissed about Bran going. It's kind of weird. Why like? Yeah, why like, she shows so like much so... more affection to Bran towards any right. other one. She's like, okay. Well, kind of like we said, I think not like my Sansa. Brand. Not my Sa- Well, brand. Sansa obviously has to go. Right. Ari- I mean, I could Arya see her like, pulling for Arya. I right. could see her pulling for Arya. 
and she already gets to keep Rick on. So Brand's like, I guess, like Brand and Arya. I don't. Yeah, it doesn't make sense why she ca- says she cares more about Brand than Arya. I feel like but. that's such a bad mom, especially if you're worried about people going down there and are in danger from dying. All right, Sansa needs to go. Well, she doesn't because, seem to be afraid well, of that. How old is Arya? I don't think she's Brand. actually that. Yeah, afraid of that. I don't think she's no, afraid of people like, dying. She's just afraid of not. I being think they're eight them. and nine. Yeah, who's uh, older? Brand's, Brand's seven. Brand's eight. Oh, Brand's and seven. Arya's nine. And Nara's nine. Okay. Um, but like again, it's close, and I don't know. And so when, yeah, Cap brings that up. She's like, Bran was only is only seven. Like he's uh, too young to go. And Ned says, I was only eight when I went, got sent to the Erie. And this is something we were talking about last time. I was like, how young was Ned? Well, he was eight when he yeah. got sent away to go live with Robert. <clears throat> so she cares a whole lot about Bran. And then we find out about a child she doesn't give two fucks about. Yeah, John. John. Jonathan. Yeah. She, yeah, couldn't, she couldn't wait for her, Ned to say, all right, I'll take John too. And he's just like, "Yeah, no, there's no spot for him as a bastard in the capital. They'll just like kick him to you know, shitty part of the town or yeah. give him no respect at all. At least he has respect up here. Yeah, so we hear that uh, John was born in the first year of Cat and, and Ned's marriage. And when Kat got back to River Run or got back to Winterfell from River Run with Rob, John and his wet nurse were already there. And she was pissed. She wasn't pissed that she said she keeps saying that she's not pissed that uh, he has bast- a bastard. He said like she would permit him like 15 bastards as long as he didn't keep them at the castle and like call him son. Right. She's uh, isn't she mad that he looks more of the north than yeah the other said, kids? Did, did she say that? She says that yeah. peeves him off. Peeves her off a little bit too. Um, yeah, so, and she says she doesn't know who the mother is, but Kat heard whispers that it was a lady, a Shard Dane. She was a brother to the deadliest knight in the Seven Kingdoms, Sir Arthur Dane. I uh, said she asked him once, and the quote is, that was the only time in their, all their years of, uh, that Ned had ever frightened her. Never ask me about John, he said, cold as ice. He is my blood, and that is all you need to know. And now I will learn where you heard that name, my lady. She had pledged to obey, she told him. And from that day on, the whispering had stopped, and Ashara's Dane, Ashara Dane's name was never heard in Winterfell again. Whoever's John's mother had been, Ned must have loved her fiercely, for nothing Catelyn said would persuade him to send the boy away. It was one thing she could never forgive him. She had come to love her husband with all her heart, but she had never found it in her to love John. She might have overlooked a dozen bastards for Ned's sake, so long as they were out of sight. John was never out of sight, and as he grew, he looked more like Ned than any of the trueborn sons she bore him. Somehow that made it worse. John must go, she said. Now. <laughs> so, kind of what we just talked about, just that there's the quote that sums up everything that we were talking about. Yeah. She wants nothing to do with him. So, there's really not any other option but to leave him in Winterfell. Well, uh, until. There is. Yeah. Until uh, I find out he was talking to Ben about uh, hitting up that wall. Yeah. Well, first I just want to point out Ned wanted to leave leave him here. Yeah, he says he said, like they were friends Rob with Rob. Friends. Yeah. yeah, and she's just not having it, and that's when Lewin. What a bitch! That's when Mister Lewin's awesome. like, "Yeah, Benjamin came to me and talking about said John wanted to join the watch." Um, and Cat immediately is like, "This is the greatest thing ever. He'll not only be gone, but because the watch can't have children, like they'll never be that's like the end of him. Yeah. He'll he'll never be able to like claim anything, and if he does have like." Like he can't have kids that will, would then want to claim something. Um, what a C U N T. And Ned Ned says the exact same thing that Benjamin says. Like he's too young. Like the like life on the wall is like super hard. And Maester Lewin is like, yeah, well, you're gonna have a hard life. You have to go move south. You don't want to do that. Cat like Cat's gonna lose her kids. She's like, we all have hard lives. Like times are hard right now. Um, and Ned's like, all right, fine. I'll talk to Benjamin about about the having John go to the wall and then if if I decide to send him I'll I'll go talk to him myself. And that's the end of the chapter. Mm-hmm. That's it. Final thoughts? Kyle thoughts? Kyle, Kyle thoughts. Final I thoughts. Mean, and this is hey. Kyle's final <laughs> thoughts. Kyle's thought of the day. I, I actually don't really <laughs> have one too thought much of the on day. This. I, I thought that uh it kinda highlighted how uh Catelyn and Ned while they don't seem to really hate each other, they also don't really seem like too super into each other either. Um, well, arra- I mean, I apparently arranged marriages work out. I'd probably stand a better shot. 
Well, I feel like, uh, yeah, their love is more platonic than like lustful. Yeah, it's you know like I mean? it's just like, uh, yeah, like we're king and queen or, or whatever they are. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I do see that, but yeah. I do think she does love him too, though. Yeah, but it kind of like that's what I was saying. It's more of a platonic love. She yeah. was hype about well, that it, nut in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it was like all the the whole first part of that chapter was kind of how she doesn't fit in there. Is really what I got out of all that. Yeah, and that's kind of the entire part, like the entire point of the first cat chapter, like talking about the gods yeah. and how it's eerie. Well, I know, but then it was like she liked it warm, like she yeah. was pumped that she got the hot room. He always opened the windows and freezes her nips off. Yeah, you know, and she's like pulling the fur up the whole time. Like I said, it just felt like it was kind of highlighting how out of place she was, where she yeah. was. That's what I got out of it. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, and then yeah. it kind of just lays the groundwork for what. What's going to happen was, next in the story? But, like, she didn't want to go. I was kind of surprised that she didn't try and go long, but I think she also understood she somebody had to stay. Well, but... it's kind of like the first thing Ned sa- says when he starts talking about the children. He's like, Rob has to learn to lead. I'm not going to be here. You have to teach him. So yeah. Ned kind of, like, that's, like, his first thing is you have to stay with Rob to make sure he knows what he's doing. But, yeah, it does seem like she would want to want to go. Like, that's definitely more her place, right, down – yeah, at least down south of everybody It's else. at least warmer, yeah. yeah. Obviously, it's warmer because everybody's pissed about how cold it is yeah. and they show up. So that's what I got. That's me. All right. We'll let Kyle go. Deuces, Kyle. And we'll go right into the spoil Peace section. Peace out, Kyle. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! All right, let's jump into it. Uh, I didn't have this suspicion at first, but after reading it the second time and now going through it again, is Maester Lewin a shady motherfucker? Yeah, for that's sure. what Nelson brought up, man. He thinks he has something going on, dude. Yeah, let me hear some crazy theories about it. I don't know if we ever talked about this, but I'm I've Nelson told me I don't know if we're recording. Some or people not. think that. Um... The Maester on the Shy Maid, the boat with Septa Lamour, uh, Griff, Young right, Griff. Right, 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 right. People think that Maester is the person who was the Maester in Winterfell before Lewin got there. Okay. Now, we also hear in the end of the fourth book, that's one thing, completely unrelated. In the end of the fourth book, we hear uh, Maester Marwyn talk to Sam and says, like, first off, he says that the Maesters were the ones that killed the dragons, which would mean that the Maesters were behind the pinning the Targaryens against each other and to have a civil war and kill them all. Because we know the death of the dragons happened in the Dance Did they the mean dragons. the actual dragons or like... So he says and then another thing, and then they tried to end the Targaryen line okay. and end up sending... Uh, and like the example that he gives is he sends um, Aemon to the wall. Wow. That way he's completely as far away as he can be as a maester and like not so, really bother anybody. So do we think that Maester Lewin was just like a part of Littlefinger? Or? So a lot of people think that the maesters have their own agenda. In the in the Fire and Ice, whatever the Fire and Blood, the prequel book, uh, it's like okay, a history book came history out. Book. They like when the Faith and uh, the maesters were all kind, were like kind of like running everything like they were the only thing that really held everything together you know what i right. mean like it was okay. seven separate kingdoms and they all had but they all had like different maesters most of them had maesters and the faith was there and when the targaryens came they conflicted with the mostly with the faith because of the whole like polygamy and the incest thing um and the but the maesters it seems like the maesters because they're in old town the high towers and then the faith are all kind of like a lot of people think those three are basically one big faction or like have a close relation. Faith, Maesters, High Towers. Um, Were the High Towers again? They're, the, they're just the Lords of Old Town. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of people think that the Maesters are, are behind like scheming and they kind of just want balance and they liked it when they, they were the ones in charge and were new rulers and that's why they that's why they didn't like dragons because that's something they can't control. Okay. But, so people, there's a lot of theories that involve like, well, if the maesters are reading every message that comes through their castle, like that that assume that the maester of each castle knows like a lot of things that they could be up to a bunch of different stuff. Okay. Um, so like basically, the, this evidence is just towards Maester Lewin somehow knows that John's a Targaryen, if John's a Targaryen, and is just trying to get him to the wall because once he says his vows, doesn't matter who he is, right. he's at the wall for good. Um, and it seems like he's trying to. Like, Put Ned in danger. Put well, he's sending and Ned south. Ned away again. Like how? How would he know what's really going on south? But all yeah. right, so maybe not 
put Ned in danger, but to definitely take him away from Rob so that he can start like coaching up Rob. Yeah, that's true. So he can get in Rob's ear. That makes sense. Yeah. Again, that's just like yeah, they try to just shape, try and be in charge. So just hmm. keep an eye out for. I mean, he, Mace Lewin again. I mean, he it's, dies, it's not like so. It's not like they're like explicitly um, like against people. Right, like I don't think Maester Lewin has any ill will for the Starks. He just is playing cards to put the Maesters as a whole in the best hmm. power. So you think he's not with Littlefinger? You think he's completely separate? Just like I don't think he's with Littlefinger. Okay, no. so he could be though. That's a, that's not a bad theory because he did. He is from River Run, and we know that Littlefinger fosters River Run. Is that what you're uh, getting at? He, kind of. I'm just trying to think about how that box got there. Like, who would have put the box? That's true. Like maybe he just had it the whole time. But I mean, it's not crazy to think we hear like three hundred people with the king. But why Little would why would he have throws one along? Right, I'm trying. If Maester put the box there, unless it was from Littlefinger. Littlefinger definitely knows how to get a box in a Maester's yeah. chambers. Right, like. right. No, I'm saying if it was Maester Lewin who just always had the box, he was working with Littlefinger. But yeah. if Littlefinger found a way to get someone in the party to take it down there. That's something different. Yeah, I've never thought about little fair work with, with uh, Mr. Lewin, but it makes sense because of the whole Lewin's from Riverrun thing. If Lewin's from Riverrun. Again, I don't know how much of that we actually know. Like, I was saying, yeah, what do we know? He, Kyle, he has but, more like, allegiance we'll to the Tollies later. than he does a bastard child. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess, unless Littlefinger's interests align with the Maesters, and he is working for, like, a greater cause that the Maesters are trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah sure. All right. So, I mean, I guess that was the other question. It was like, how did the box get there? Well, the one, the one thing I want to know about Lewin before we get to that is, did Benjen really come to Lewin and ask about... Did he bring that up? Did he say that? He says Benjen came to me about John when they started talking about what to do with John. Like, Benjen was against John joining the Night's Watch when he talked to John at the hall. Yeah, but he might have talked to but the Maester for guidance. Yeah. You know, Maester didn't Spitzer's Benjen say, uh, I'll talk to Ned? I'll talk to your father? I'll talk to your father. Why would he go to Lewin behind, and Just not because... talk to Ned? You know, maesters are known for their counsel, and that's what I'm thinking. I I, I don't think Lewin has bad intentions, but maybe I don't think he has bad in intentions. General. I just think his intentions aren't necessarily like he has other motives. Like he has okay. a, not yeah. not like he's not trying to serve the like the Starks and advise them and stuff. So some of this might be honest advisement, but some stuff I think it when when it helps the maesters, he might do something like kind of against what you would think the Stark should do. How would he know John would be a Targaryen, though? I don't know how he would know that, but if he has, uh, again, Anybody we don't know that dude's what. Diary. Do we ever, we, we don't ever find out who actually, uh, like, birthed the baby, right? Who birthed, wh- whoever Lyanna had? No, we don't know exactly which one is I don't think there's Lyanna's any confirmation, kid. no. Yeah. Yeah. We know, like, I think Lyanna. Benjen or the so Kranig men, man is going to reveal that. That's why there's a thing that uh, the mate. I think people are trying to basically the the, th- the one theory that I mentioned at the very beginning is everybody on the shy maid is a fake person because you have fake Griff, or you have Griff who's pretending who's John Con, you have Aegon who's pretending to be young Griff, you have people think Septa Lamore is actually a Shardane or at least somebody else because she has a, a pregnancy scar, and then you think people think that that Maester okay well who's the fake Maester Halden Half Maester. People think uh, because he's half maester, he says something about being half maester. I forget what the other half he says is, but people think it like is a hint that he's from Winterfell and he's the maester that that kind of disappears from Winterfell whenever Lewin shows up. Um, That's weird. That's all weird. Is there any there. description of the Septa? Which Septa? There's a the one. No, that starts in Arya's chapter, which is next. Yeah. Wait, no, no, no. I mean, Septa, the hot one. I forget oh, her name. Septa Lamore? Lamore, yeah. Yeah, they say she has, like, violet eyes. Basically, she's described the same as a Shardane. Lilac or Septa. violet? Oh, violet. I don't remember, man. Uh, I mean, they said a Shardane had violet eyes, so. It's the same yeah, color. She does. No, there is a difference. A Shardane has the same purple. eyes as Daenerys, so I'm on board for Daenerys being a Shard's daughter. Okay. But then, again, then the whole. Do the Danes. Are they related to the Targaryens? Is there blood? There's some blood line connection. I don't not know. a lot. I mean, they could just have violet purple eyes too. I don't. They do. He ba- she banged at Rhaegar. Right. So I'm saying, like, the Danes just have purple eyes. It's, it's the same as, you know, I have brown eyes. Nelson has brown eyes. We're not fucking related. Yeah. yeah first yeah, off, I don't have brown eyes. But out. but I think it's not that. You don't have so brown eyes. <laughs> I don't. But the Hightower people. 
They have I like the people from the high tower, uh um I didn't think Glow did, so I had to choose you. All right, brown eyes. I think Ah fuck. <laughs> just had it backwards. Yeah, I think the uh the people from the high tower are known for having purple eyes too, and I think that there's like like thoughts that they have some tr- connection with dragons, and that they're all they're just like a different colony from old Valyria from before Aegon came. There was a few Valyrians who settled in Westeros, but not many. So did I don't know. Quint- so did Quentin Martell. Quentin has purple eyes. No, he had a connection with the dragons. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, f- a flame and hot connection. That's for sure. <laughs> um, so then the other thing I just wanted was wondering is like. It's kind of suspicious how Cat throws this letter away. Yeah. Doesn't let anybody read it. and But then she mentions that it would be dangerous if anybody else found it when it's in another letter. Did it say like, something when else? It was, when it's in another language. Was there something in there that she's... Ex- yeah, exactly. I could see Again, that. a lot of times, George R. R. Martin has said that when uh, you're in the viewpoint of a character, he's not trying to... He's, like, giving all the thoughts that she has and not hiding anything. Right. Right. He doesn't want like because we're in Catelyn's. This is a Catelyn chapter. We're we're hearing her thoughts. It's uh. So I doubt there's anything else in it, and I think it probably is just everything she says, and it's just kind of like a, it's off. You know what I mean? Right. 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 Like in the writing, it just doesn't make sense. Well, it's threatening the Lannisters, the Queen, with murder. Uh, It's not threatening, but it's you know basically saying accusing the Lannisters of murder. So if the Queen found it. Yeah, they. I guess just to trouble. keep her sister's name out of it. That way, like, if the queen found it, like, even if they did get outed for accusing the queen of murder, it doesn't end up going back to Lysa. Or maybe the letter. If Littlefinger was smart, he would have said "burn" after reading in the letter. That way, he has complete deniability. Yeah, or something later. like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. Who the fuck put the box there? What a little Littlefinger paid somebody yeah. to come with the king. Fucking I think Littlefinger's little birds. I don't think it's anybody special. All right, fuck it. Uh, do we want to talk about the whole Ashara Dane being the mom of? Yeah, that's the John. last thing. Is whatever that sentence is, right? He. Uh, is How about Dane. Ned? Like, I'd like to. I'd pay to see Ned angry, like actually angry. We never saw that. Well, even when she says that, it's not that. Uh, he he was, gets like, angry at Littlefinger. He wasn't even yelling, right? Which tells you like what uh, kind of yeah, anger yeah, it was. Yeah. It says, "Never ask me about John." He said, cold as ice. He is my blood, and that is all you need to know. And now I will learn where you heard that name, my lady. She had pledged to obey, she told him. And from that day on, the whisperings had stopped, and Arshara Dane's name was never heard in Winterfell again. So he doesn't sound like he yells. He's just, like, all of a sudden just, super yeah. stern. Changes the tone. Well, why Arshara Dane? Like, why would that get him mad? You know what I mean? That's like, you get called out for, I don't know, let's just say you get called out for stealing, and you're trying to play it off, like, Oh, I didn't do that. Like, that makes you really angry. Like, that's kind of like... A yeah, I don't know. It, well, it seems like he's definitely trying to hide something. I, yeah. I agree with Nelson that Ashara Dane is somehow not... She didn't commit suicide and she's still alive. And she's, she's a important. part of the plot. Yeah. I don't think... She had a baby right before she committed suicide that apparently died and that's why she committed suicide. You wouldn't... She wouldn't be a part of the story. She couldn't. can't just be like a random name. You know what I mean? So yeah. I like I do like the theory that Ashara Dane is Ned or that Danny is Ashara and Ned's kid because as we'll go on anytime we have a Ned chapter and somebody mentions like Liana and the Promise or like or or no 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 uh yeah well Liana and the Promise is one of them but also anytime Robert, Robert wants brings to up kill Daenerys. killed Danny he thinks of the Promise sometimes that's kind of I guess more of a hint towards Liana being Danny's mom yeah right. but uh, I also think that and his then John fear, actually like, being ever Ashara's, found. I think it's his fear if John ever got found out to, for being Targaryens, he would kill his, what he called his son. So yeah. I think that's why he's thinking about that. Like, uh, if yeah, he I ever don't... found out about John, he would kill. It's him. also like one of the big thing that people people who think that John is actually Ashara's kid, whether it's Ashara, there's theories that it's Ashara and Brandon instead of Ashara and Ned, and Ned is again not it's not his dad, but just his uncle, but just from not Lyanna, but from Brandon and Ashara. And it does seem like John has some connection to Ashara. That, and that's like the people who believe that theory think about this. Because it says that was the only time in all their years never frightened her. Never asked me about John. But she doesn't ask about John. She says she asks about Ashara Dane. And Ned responds with never asked me about John. Which kind of links Ashara and John to being connected. You know but, I mean? Yeah, but she's also asking about Ashara because of John. Because of John. Okay. So it's not like she was asking about Ashara just out of nowhere. Yeah. She's asking... 
all right, that's his mom. Like, yeah, I think he kind of knew that. But uh, if say Danny's a Shara, Dane, like we don't know what color of hair she has, does she? Like right, Shara has dark hair. Yeah, but so, we know all Targaryen. We know that there's Targaryens with dark hair. A- Egg's brother has dark hair. Yeah, but with a uh, like streak of silver gold or whatever the fuck they call it. Some Targaryens have dark hair. I'm sure they do, but I don't know. I think it's. And some Danes have light hair. We don't know that. I think we do. We only know of two Danes. Come on. Yeah, they're, they're black. Not hair. right now, but in the books, I think we know more. All right, we'll find out. I don't think she's. I think it'd be cooler oh, if she also, was Danny's mom. Another thing or, you guys, I mean, uh, John's mom. Another thing you guys probably don't remember. Uh, there, we do see another Dane. He's like a young. He's the young Lord Dane, I think. Uh, we don't know his exact relation. I think he's like a nephew to Ashara and um, Arthur. His name's Eddard. Hmm. Eddard Dane. How about that? And the th- the story goes that Ned killed Arthur Dane. So if Ned kills right. Arthur Dane, why would they then turn around and name a kid Eddard? Eddard. But yeah, I mean, maybe it was named before that. So know. people think that the Danes and I think somebody talks to Eddard in these books, and I, I don't again, I don't remember exactly who. Somebody talks to Eddard in these books, and he has nothing but good things to say about the Starks. I so, okay. it's, so people think if that they're that tight. Why did Ned fight Arthur Dane in the beginning? Why you know before the Tower of Joy? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, we'll figure it out. Uh, that's why I don't... It doesn't make sense for them to fight at all. Why are they fighting? For Lyanna. But why is he, he wants protecting see... Lyanna from Ned? Why can't he work it out? Because he, he's working with the Baratheons, and the Baratheons might kill Lyanna and fucking... Yeah. Her baby. Like, if it goes down... Like, you're thinking of the scene in the show. And if it goes down like that, it doesn't really... That doesn't Do make any sense. we have no... We don't have any of You're that You're right. That's, story that doesn't yet. really make sense. And why would the King's Guard meet them in open like if you're trying if you're guarding a pregnant lady who's like in the middle of giving birth, you wouldn't go rush out and meet seven armed men in outside of a tower. You would stay in the freaking tower like they do in the egg Duncan egg books. Like they just raise the ladder up and Sir Benna stays in that freaking tower. When all you have is a tower, you use the tower. Yeah. Uh I guess I thought we I guess we haven't heard about it yet because Bran isn't really – he's barely the three-eyed raven for us to get back in time. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. Fuck it. So, yeah, I mean, we'll get more – again, as we piece through, we'll just remember this stuff and try and piece together what's happening at the Tower of Joy. Um, One with comment I want to make uh, yeah. about Ned's fear of going south and all that. So if you think about it. At this time, you don't know John's dead, so I'm going to say it like this. Um, he only got stabbed. You don't know he's dead. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Ned goes south, he dies. Uh, Rob. Rob goes south, he dies. John goes north, he's still alive? So maybe like it's a thing, really what they say when a Stark goes south. Stark goes south, yeah. They, they fucking don't do well. Yeah, but he's been yeah. south before because he fought on the Trident and shit. That's true. Yeah, but how far south is the Trident? Well, the is Tower further than the Twins? The Tower, the tower of Joy is in Dorne. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. south. Yeah, you're right. All right, uh, well, man, my man. Disregard man my in comment. The, in the Disregard desert. my comment. I mean, the, it's something it's to think generalization, about, yeah. Yeah. Maybe not, like, just down there, but, like, staying, like, trying to live Try- down there. Yeah. But I guess the brother didn't really no, try Rob to live down there. They just kind of were answering the, uh, answering the call. Yeah. The call to war. All right. Uh, well, that's all I got. That's all the notes I yeah. have for this section. I think. This I mean, was... the Ashara Dane, the, like the Ashara Dane Tower Joy thing, is like the biggest thing. Like Lyanna Stark, Ashara Dane, Rhaegar, Dane. I think Maester Lewin is a. Together. If we didn't know that Maester Lewin's gonna die, I think figuring out what his well, kind of motives I, were. Well, he's gonna have just, more. He's gonna have more like fucking an scenes. Eye on the Maesters. Yeah. This is just yeah, like but fuck the other Maesters. Maesters I want Maester Lewin. We we get like. Other than Maester uh, Old Fuck in King's Landing. Creston. Oh, Maester Pycel. Pycel. Who's Crescent? Crescent is, the, is, Crescent is, uh, is the Bar- prologue of the second Baratheon. Book. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, other than, like, Pycel, we really don't get too much of another Maester. We'll see. Maesters are, like, a I huge mean, theory in this. Like, people have made, like... Yeah, and Crescent's like, motive is, too, trying to stop another religion, so their their relationship with the faith makes sense. 
I know you get all excited about the Maester shit, Nels, because we get the, the glass candles and all that bullshit. I don't want the Maesters to have anything because they're such pussy little boys. Well, I think just the one Maester has a glass candle. Because most Maesters don't believe in the glass candle. At least that's what Marwin says. Uh, but who knows? Okay. Uh, it's just I, the fact that when every letter into or out of a lord, like into or out of a castle... The they, do a, lord, they do hold a lot of power throughout the whole seven kingdoms. No doubt. No doubt. Also, also, and they so could probably burn that and write the letter and use their mark and people would believe exactly. it to be Not their blink hand. an eye or, at it. Right, or right, right. communicate to each other without anybody knowing, right? Like if, yeah, 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 yeah. If, so, if Robert wants to send a letter to Ned, two maesters are going to know. Pycelle and Lewin. If Lewin wants to talk to Pycelle, nobody knows except for those two. You know what yeah, I mean? That's good I'm stuff. not saying in their cahoots. I'm, I'm just saying that. Another thing, another theory I've, I've heard that I want to point out real quick is that Littlefinger is so good in his scheming that he's even uh, – trying to trick he knows that there's something up with weirwoods and the old gods and he's trying to purposely trick blood raven and blood raven slash old gods because they're kind of the same thing right no way Little in the ways not... that one he doesn't send a lot of times little finger doesn't send messages through ravens like this box right yeah he so a raven never saw this and we hear later in the brand chapters that all the ravens have a child of the forest living inside of them and they used to be able to talk to like people normally and Bran says, and they Bran says he works into a raven and can feel a child of the forest. And Blood Raven tells him that all ravens have a ch- child of the forest still in them. Um, so people think that anything that gets passed by a raven, old gods can see. That's why Peter purposely avoids that. What happens when all the ravens die and all of the wargs die in them? And Peter Baelish sometimes purposely does stuff in front of weirwood trees and in places with no weirwood trees. He steals Sansa. He has Dantos plotting to remove Sansa in front of a weirwood tree in the Godswood and King's Landing. But yeah. as soon as Sansa starts going missing, he takes her to the Vale where weirwood trees can't grow. Hmm. I got you. So people, there's theories that ba- like Littlefinger is on to the old gods and, and like what is almost How the fuck setting would up Peter pieces Baelish for them. Be that fucking smart? I don't know, but he's He'd like be the I don't fucking know, genius of the Seven Kingdoms. If he can find out how the gods fucking communicated, and they can. But see... we know it's not really a god; it's just a dude in a tree, and like a, it's a collection of yeah, like people who he can like that? see through. Ravens the only way he would know that is if he had three-eyed raven powers too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like if there's but multiple three-eyed ravens. I, I just and like he the theory like that, that. I mean, it might all be a coincidence, but I just like the theory that Littlefinger is so good. At be just pulling all the strings. That I know not only is he pulling all the strings and making everybody do what he wants them to do, but he's also hiding certain stuff from the super powers in this. Dude, yeah, that'd be. I fucking like that. Insane. I do like that too. I like the theory, uh, but yeah, I know Jeff would like that theory. A lot of these theories, there's not evidence for in these chapters. I'm just laying down to like put keep an put eye out the back of your guys' heads to like keep an eye out while we're reading. This one is like, oh, Littlefinger sends a message about uh, sending. Ned's like this. This message is what sends Ned south, right? Yeah. Little fingers right. behind sending Ned south. That comes in a message that no Raven saw. Yeah, so no Raven could try to stop him and influence well, it in his. So way. the three eyed Raven wouldn't know who's behind sending Ned south. He yeah, but also Ned's going to go to the will. fucking. He's going to go to the tree and like explain what he's doing and like saying, "What should I do here?" Out loud to the tree. About you he's think, like we got a letter from uh, Lysa Tully. He's not going to say that out loud in front of the he weirwood might. tree. That he might, might. might, yeah. Uh, I'm just saying. Do you think the original plan for Littlefinger? Because we, I think we all believe that he truly wants the throne, and he'd have to do a lot more work. But his initial goal was to get Cat. I don't think so. He, you don't think he cares about Cat at all? I think all he cares I about is so. throne. I, I think don't step either. one. Fuck Cat. She can't think, be that cool. I think step one is kill John Aaron. Like, he kills John Aaron. Why? If you're Littlefinger, why do you kill John Aaron? What motive do you have? To get the Starks involved somehow. That's, like, the one obvious one is is now there's an open spot, and you know who Robert's going to replace that spot with. Yeah. So one, that gets them in King's Landing. Maybe By sending he, this message, maybe now he's he pinning the Starks Sam? against I mean, Lannisters. Sure. And that's two of the most powerful houses. So he kills John Aaron to get Ned in King's Landing. Then he pins the two most powerful houses against them. That's kind of like the whole chaos is a ladder thing. And also, as a two-for-one, by killing John Aaron, he now is the closest person, because he knows he's the closest person to Lysa. He was close to Lysa before John Aaron died. That's how he got Lysa to put the drops in his drink. 
So by doing that, not only does he kill John Aaron, open the spot for Ned to come down, but now he opens another spot for himself as Lysa's suitor, giving him some power in the veil. So these seem like the first steps of little, we'll, what we know now to be Littlefinger. And they're unfolding like in these like early chapters and it's already like coming together. It's just like crazy how much George R. R. Martin had to have, have planned out at this point. We're cha- this is chapter six. And all this is our, like we're already laying groundwork for all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean you have to write an outline before you start writing a book. Well, he said he was writing – I, I said this before. He was writing the sci-fi book. All of a sudden, he had the picture of Bran in the Summer Snows of the Dire Wolves, and he wrote that chapter. And he said he just kept writing. He said he wrote like three chapters in the first sitting. He, like how does it come to – like where – did he have this in mind? I guess this wasn't in it. Like the first – I don't know, man. There's a lot. Where does it unfold as it goes? Does uh, he like leave it open-ended? Like when he wrote this, did he know who uh, – yeah, but he also – he did put an outline together before. Yeah, he must have eventually. He said at There's one point so he many had, characters. He originally had Imagine three, that fucking he had outline. He a three-book series and it turned into fucking seven. Yeah. Yeah, because he has so many characters. You know what I mean? Like the fucking yeah. story is unbelievable. Yep. All right, well, that's all I had for this one. You guys got anything else? No, nah, I'm good. Nelson's a bitch. All right. It's not true. But we'll see you guys hey. next time. Thanks for listening. Uh, Be sure to follow us on whatever platform you listen on or like us if you watch us on YouTube. really helps us out. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Aria 1. See you there. Peace out, mofos. The night is dark and full of tevas.